Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another high grade review and I'm super excited about this one right here. And of course it is the high grade infinite justice Gundam from Gundam Seed Destiny. So this is one of two Gundam Seed Destiny kits that were released in the one day, which is great. Both are awesome. I've checked them both out, built them both, and they make me very, very happy. The other one, of course, is the High Grade Wyndham, which is a grunt suit based on the fine build system. Kind of like the Leo, Maganac, and the Death Army. But I feel it's better than every single one of them. But we'll be taking a look at that some other day. Today, let's get right into the justice. Anyway, as usual, this video right here would not be possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want this or the Wyndham, links are down there in the description. Now here we go. So starting off this review a little differently than usual, there it is straight away up on the shelf with the absolutely mind-blowing high-grade Destiny Gundam. Of course, if you have not seen that review yet, make sure to check that one out. And another disclaimer, as usual, this shelf is mainly covered in Master Grade kits, so these do look a little bit smaller than they'd actually be. And there's a perfect grade up top there, so you can see just how big one of those is. One thing I have to say is there is no more glam a Gundam out there than the High Grade Infinite Justice. The pink on white with the green trim is crazy looking. So much so that one of my first ever Master Grade Gunpla was the Infinite Justice, which I still love to this day. This is some crazy, crazy color, and this will stand out in any Gunpla collection. I mean, it's hot, hot pink. Before we talk about the kit itself, let's take a quick look around the box. So first off, there is the box art of the Justice Gundam, or should I say Infinite Justice Gundam. We've got the Destiny in the back there with, uh, well, He's got his arm literally kicked right off. Moving around now to the first side of the box. We've got another image of another kick and that looks like it's losing a leg. Once again, as I've said before, I still haven't gotten around to watching Gundam Seed Destiny. So forgive my absolute lack of knowledge. Anyway, there is a bit of a blurb about it right there on the side of the box. So you can read that at your own leisure by pausing right now. And I might as well answer it now because someone will ask. All that crap all over the box right there did not come on the box. That is just residue left over from me wiping it down with alcohol. You know, safety and all that. Stay safe. Anyway, onto the other side of the box. Here we have that front and rear image of what the kit will look like finished. It does say that some of this has been painted, so it's not an unpainted build right there. Sliding over a little, and we've got all of that action going on there. And this thing does pack in a lot of action and a lot of accessories. And while I'm mentioning that, this kit does come in at around the 2,400 yen mark, which is quite pricey. Because if you consider the real grade over here, which is the real grade Justice Gundam, which is the Gundam that came before this one right here, that was only around 2,200, maybe 2,500 yen, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Let's Google it! Yeah, so here we have it on the Gundam Wiki that cost 2,500 yen retail back in 2012. You can still get it now, I'm sure, but sadly to my actual shame, uh... I've never actually gotten around to building that kit. That's something I really need to do. I love Atheron Zala's suits because, well, they're pink and awesome. But as for why this costs essentially the same price as that, I guess we're yet to see. I believe it's because there's a lot of stuff in the box, but there is also a lot of plastic. If I have a picture of it, I'll pop it up right now. I don't know if I do, but that could be the reason. Anyway, it can fly. It's got lots of weapons, likes to kick, and over here we've got all that stuff all those gimmicks we would have seen in the absolutely awesome Justice Knight. I was actually just looking around there for where my Justice Knight is to compare it later on, and I think it might be in this box that I've been kind of shaking around a lot. Is it? Yeah. Whoops. Sorry about that little guy. But yeah, just shaking around the Justice Knight here won't knock a stir out of it. This is one super solid and awesome Gundam. Once again, if you haven't seen the review of this guy, check it out. It is a great kit. And speaking of great kits, enter... The High Grade Infinite Justice. So right off the bat, there is the High Grade Infinite Justice with absolutely everything that it comes with. So as you can see, you kind of get your 2,400 yens worth in here in general, especially when it comes to a lot of the color separation, especially on the mobile suit itself. So as for the stickers, they aren't the worst. The ones I've used right there are for on all those head cameras, the eyes, etc. Moving down again, and those black ones were for using in the chest there, but I uh, decided to just panel line them in black instead. The yellow little guy right here is for on the shield generating part on the shield right there. And finally, those big old pink ones, those are definitely the worst, and those are for on the rifle here. So the rifle here should have some pink segments, 
like what you would see right here in the instructions. So that is what is missing from this, but it's not the worst, but it takes away from how unique and dynamic the Gundam Seed Destiny rifles look. That would have been nice to have that there, but again, it's not the worst. It's not on the actual mobile suit itself, so it could be a whole lot worse. But anyway, to sum it up, what we've got in here is the mobile suit itself. We've got the shield, shield effect, a wire, that beam rifle, a base adapter, believe it or not. But if you've seen my review of the Justice Knight, you'd know that's in there. We've got variants of the beam sabers, a whole bunch of beam effects, and we've got that big old backpack back there, all of which we'll look at later after the mobile suit itself. But yeah, back to the mobile suit. So jump and ride on in with that full 360 degree spin so you can see all of that lovely detail for yourself and decide on whether you like this thing or not. So right off the bat, I just have to mention how magical this thing right here looks. It's got a unicorn horn camera and it's bubblegum pink and white. What is not to like about that? That is ridiculous looking. Just like we would have seen with the Justice Knight, the detailing on this is fantastic. The color separation is crazy for a high grade. I have done my usual double snip cut with the god hand on this, I do it everything and you cannot see a nub anywhere, they're so small. If there's some on this, they are so, so minimal. I can't really say that for the backpack, that is a lot more chunky when it comes to the nubs, but as for this right here, it is ridiculously, ridiculously impressive. The detailing is phenomenal. This thing has one of the coolest faces I've seen on a Gundam in quite some time. One, it's got that absolutely magnificent pink. Two, it's got some of those gray or silver cheekbone sections there highlighting its muzzle, which is pretty cool. The sticker for the eyes went on seamlessly. They look so striking. And it may not show up in this video, sadly, but these silver parts are sparkly. If this wasn't magical and unicorny enough already, and I mean a real unicorn, not Gundam unicorn, this is awesome and reminds me of the Master Grade version. And reminding me of the Master Grade version reminds me I asked you guys on here some questions last night, so let's get some answers. And actually it was just the one question, it was what do you want to see, but here we go! So I did ask you guys over on the community tab what you'd like to see in this review, so I'm going to blast through them really, really quickly here just to mix things up a little bit. And once again, if I do gloss over or miss one of your comments or your questions, etc., I do apologize. I'm just going to try and get through them pretty quickly and the ones that are kind of the most relevant to the review right here. So no particular order and just scrolling on through, Cabbage Cat asked, what are actually the differences between the Justice and the Infinite Justice? And can I show them both? So, so first off I will mention I do not have a 144th scale version of any version of the Justice Gundam. But I do have both Master Grades and I will apologize if I have to hold them right here because... Heads up there, Infinite. Because they're both very back heavy and I'm not gonna go get an action base. But on the left here, this is the Justice. This over here on the right is the Infinite Justice. These are both two completely different generations of Master Grade. This is more old school, so it's a little simpler and a lot more solid. This is a bit newer with the Seed X-Frame or whatever it was called, and this one has gotten a little bit loose over time. Both of which I've had for quite some time, and both of which have been shipped all the way from Japan to Ireland, so they have had a difficult life. This guy's missing quite a few parts. But yeah, this one is brighter, which is the Infinite Justice. This one's a little darker, and in general, a lot of the equipment is kind of the same, just upgraded over here. Once again, I have not seen the anime, so all I can say is, like with me, the Gundam Wiki is your best friend. So the next question's a long one, and I'm not even gonna try and butcher your name, sorry about that, but... But it says compare it with the Justice Knight, Real Grade Justice, and the Master Grade Infinite Justice, and I do not have a Meteor unit, yet. Kinda want one. So there it is, side by side with the Justice Knight from Gundam Build Divers, which is an absolutely fantastic kit. Even if you do not like Gundam Build Divers, I highly recommend getting yourself a Justice Knight. It's such a fun and awesome little mobile suit. Of course, neither of these right now have the backpacks attached. And speaking of the back, spin them around so you can check that out. These also have some of the oddest backpack adapters, so we'll mention that a little bit more in future when we're talking about the backpack. But both of these right here are absolutely mesmerizingly beautiful kits, and I recommend them both. As for that comparison with the Master Grade version, here it is right now, and this is one of my new favorite things to do, and that is to make two kits of different scales of the exact same mobile suit, kind of to scale side by side, so honestly, I cannot see this right now myself, this will be done in editing later on, so I can't really comment on the differences between them when it comes to proportions, size, etc. 
But what I will mention is I do prefer the colors on the brand new high grade. The pink is a little bit more purplish and the green on the chest pops a lot more. Also, I will mention there is no stickers at all on the high grade's body, which is incredible. But I will say for the master grade, if you're thinking of picking this one up because you prefer that particular scale, this kit really does hold up. Sure, it's got some old school hands, etc. But it is a very nice, solid, somewhat basic kit. And one I absolutely love. I don't usually put decals on my kits, but when I love them, I do it. Well, I used to do it more when I had more time. But anyway, they both look fantastic. So next up, Scarlet Rain asked, and by the way, you're way too kind. Can you check if the beam effects can be used on the Justice Knight and to show the backpack unit on some other Gundams? So let's do just that. So the beams in question are these ones here which go on the shins of the standard Infinite Justice. It is jumping a little bit ahead, but this is kind of fun to do this review in a little bit of a different way. But anyway, the answer is, well, not really. It does plug into the little segment down here which does emit the beam, but there is no section up here on the upper knee like what we have on this guy here. So trying it both ways. The answer is no, but you could put it in a picture and angle it this way and it does look okay, but it doesn't have that section for attaching it up top. Now as for the backpack, the issue in here is the fact that this is one very different style backpack adapter. So this, which we will take a look at more later on, does connect from here into there like that. So this is not your standard style backpack. And unlike the Justice Knight that we just looked at, a couple of times already in this review, there is no adapter supplied. So this right here is the backpack which the Justice Knight comes with. It's not, well, it's nothing like the Fatum 2 at all, but it does have the exact same attachment point back here. And while I'm talking about that, there is a quick example of both kits wearing each other's backpack. So flipping them around to the back, that is what they look like. But as I was saying, the Justice Knight came with this pair of adapters right here for using this backpack with other kits. These two adapters also did come with the blue variant of that backpack, which was sold separately as an option kit. So these adapters are not present with this kit right here, sadly. But as for what these adapters do, they convert these two particular pegs, which are on the Fatum 2, into your standard style double peg backpack adapter. Now, now we can try it onto other things. So first up, there it is on the Destiny Gundam, if you want yourself some kind of infinite destiny. Of course, the colors out of the box don't really match per se, but if you want to paint that up and make some kind of custom, that is totally possible. Once again, you do need the adapter. And honestly, the adapter doesn't look so bad in there. It's not as obvious as some adapters. If I move this back, it does stick out ever so slightly, but once again, it is not the worst. So I can't help myself, next up has to be the Core Gundam, and I didn't realize this at first, but this is going to be a bit of an adapter hell, because we need to put on this adapter first to give it the standard backpack adapter, then you need this adapter, and then it's adapter into adapter into backpack, and oh ho ho, that <laughs> right there is a bit on the, uh, well, cluster fudge sort of uh, goings on right there. But yeah, from the front he looks like a cute little butterfly, from the back, still kind of looking like a cute little butterfly. Flipping that up then, and it barely comes to his back at all, and uh, yeah, kind of works. Not really, moving on. So I tried to look for some kits that would match this particular backpack, and I thought of the Love Phantom right here, which is essentially the same color as this right here, so this should be interesting. So the Love Phantom has the standard backpack adapter, and actually, hold on a minute. Is that the Force? Impulse's chest or a mix of chest, I'm not sure, but anyway, that right there is the hole. Enter the backpack with the adapter. Once again, backpack adapter is sold separately. And there we go, that almost matches perfectly, if not absolutely perfectly. However, I do see why, in general, the backpacks are a different color to the mobile suit because, well, it's a little bit overkill on that particular shade of purple and yellow, right? But yeah, that's what it looks like. Flipping that up. But anyway, there we go with it flipped up. Not really an opposed per se, but I don't know, that's actually pretty cool. The next question right here by Kite Tenjo is pretty much the same, just the other way around. So the answer to that is, you can, but you need the adapter, the other adapter, I should say, that came with the Justice Knight or the Justice Knight weapons, which is for converting what we have here in the Infinite Justice to a standard backpack adapter. Once again, this is not included, sadly, with this kit. You think it would be, but it is not. 
Using that then you can pop on the Destiny's wings like this. Once again, not the cleanest or most flush attachment ever, but it does mean you can do this. You can actually raise the wings up just like this, like you would with the Fatum 2. How high does it go? Pretty much all the way. You can spread those out then and it's got that kind of Fat Tomb 2 kind of vibe. So that's an interesting thing. Of course, the weapons that are meant to be on here aren't on here because I don't display it with them at the moment. But yeah, you do need an adapter and it's not as flush as it could be. So as for the questions about the high grade strike and the high grade freedom, high grade impulse, etc. I don't have any of those kits, so I can't actually do that. So sorry to any of you guys who asked me questions about that because I can't do it with things I don't have. And anyway, onto the last two questions or I'll be at the whole review doing this right here. So this one is a little bit unrelated and it's when will I do another Figma Android or SH Figuarts Arts review? Well, the answer to that is very, very, very soon. I do have a Figma on the way right now, which is a bit of a throwback. Very similar to something we've seen before a long, long time ago and uh, hint, it comes with a horse. Next question! So this one right here, I'm glad someone asked, but I can't actually answer it. And of course that is, is this sturdier to those with the RG seed frame like the Justice? I do not have the Justice, but it is definitely 100 times more sturdy than those guys. Actually, I'm just gonna unclip this right here. I think that might have screwed with the audio. If not, I'll voice it over. But uh, this is the result of what those seed frames are like. So let's get that ISO up so we can see. Every day. Every day I have to rearrange them and every day they fall over. So the Strike Freedom, the Destiny, wait, that's the Freedom, that's the Strike Freedom. Those kits are nightmares. Sure, they're very detailed, but out of the box, they just fall apart all the time and just fall over all the time. All of those kits I just mentioned right there, they had the same MS Joint as the Justice, which is MS Joint 4, and I absolutely despise that. Out of the box, Straight away, they're okay, but any posing, and they have wicked early real grade syndrome. So this right here is much more sturdier, and I prefer it. Whoops. I definitely prefer this to the real grades, but that is just a personal opinion. You may like the detail and the general complexity of the real grades more yourself. So the last question, I'm going to try and take this one completely at random as long as it is relevant. This isn't relevant, but I just spotted it. So I would say the Dynamis is technically better than the Barbatos, but I might just prefer the Barbatos personally, but that is not an easy decision. Flip a coin. Ha! <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm going to finish this little segment off with uh, some kind of pose like this. So I won't lie, I tried my absolute damnedest. I mean, I really, really tried to pull off the classic pose that is on the cover of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and the... Best skating game ever made, full stop. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 from the PS1. It just can't be done. The knees cannot be brought up far enough to the chest to pull off the classic pose. So as for that, yeah, that is not gonna happen. Now let's get back to the review properly. But yeah, as for a couple of the aesthetic features I may not have mentioned, we've got fully molded Vulcans on the sides of the head there, which are coming through from the layer beneath. The cameras in the head, of course, are stickers, but they're in a nice shade of reflective blue. This green layer right here is awesome. It's going right through the torso, just like we saw on the Justice Knight. And what is left to say, this is one beautiful high grade. On to the accessories. So we have seen everything that is in this box laid out already. So all we've left to do is get right on into them. So first up in here is the beam rifle. This is in a beautiful dual tone of white and very dark gray. It is missing the pink from up front. Once again, this is what it should look like, but this is what we actually get in here. As for moving parts, this side can go side to side like so, but that is it. Around here on the side, we do have this little peg for storing it away. In order to store it away, it just pops right in here around on the butt flap. Looks a little bit like that right there when stored. And that right there is an example of what it will look like held in the hand. And I have to admit, when it comes to hands with this kit, I am quite peeved at Bandai because... All we get in here is the basic blocky holding hands. For a kit that is 2,500 yen, you would hope you'd get something a little bit more expressive in here like a widespread dynamic hand. That is a little bit of a letdown, especially because the Infinite Justice right here has silver hands, which is a unique color, which means you can't really steal them off another kit without having to paint them. So that definitely is a bit of a disappointment. Next up in here, we've got a standard pair of beam sabers, but we do have this variant of them both attached. So these cannot attach together themselves. This is a separate part. These just pop into the hands like so, just slot on in like that. Pretty standard. 
And I will mention that these have a pretty awesome long handle. Anyway, that is what they look like in the hands. When these aren't in use, just pop out the beams like so. You have the option of using this double beam saber handle. I just noticed in the instructions there that this is not fully color accurate. There should be some pinky sections on the handle here. That is what it looks like when it's double ended. To store them away, this is an actual pretty neat way of doing it. This section pops off simply like that. The peg hole there goes onto a peg on the inside of that. And that whole segment then just clips back on like this. So they're held in perfectly. They're not coming out. If you have the master grade, you know what a nightmare it is to try and keep those in there. But this right here is such a simple and effective solution. They will go nowhere. I didn't add it in at the beginning like I usually do, but there is the blurb about the beam sabers if you want to know more about them. Next up then in here is the shield, and this is some shield. First off, we're just going to look at it like a standard shield, and then we'll check out all the other stuff we can do afterwards. Once again, like we've seen in the Wyndham, oh, wait, we haven't seen the Wyndham yet. But yeah, in the back of the Wyndham shield, everything is in color accurate under here. But yeah, the uh, handle in there is just molded in there, not in the correct color, and it is a little bit on the cheap-ish side. It's not the worst. The shield attachment adapter just slots into the side of the arm like this. There is a slot on either arm if you want to make this a left-handed justice. You have the option of popping the shield on that side like so, or on the rear like this, which is my personal favorite because I like to make them block like this. But as for what this bad boy of a shield can do, first off, this whole section here features a bit of a beam attachment point, so that pops in there like that, so this is one dangerous shield. If that wasn't cool enough, well, this whole section here is the Shining Edge Beam Boomerang. So that pops out just like so. Move Justice out of the way for a second. This can bend forward like this, and there we go. We've got ourselves a Beam Boomerang. Ha! Didn't work. Didn't come back. But wait, there's more! Well, it's turned into a cheesy infomercial, but there is more. So this little segment right here is a shield emitting part, so pop that off. Attach on this very Seed Destiny looking beam shield. And that just pops back in there for the Carrier beam shield. Now that looks pretty cool right there. So not only does it have a beam boomerang, it has a shield. But wait, there's more! Yeah, I should probably sh should stop doing that, but yeah. In here there is more. So inside the shield then we've got the grapple stinger anchor. So that just pops out like so. We have two silver parts and a pink part. It opens up like this. And also in here we have a handy dandy wire. And by the way, my nails are not dirty. I just have dyed my hands slightly blue. Then pops in here into the shield emitter section. And then when that section is attached in like that, we've got this. Oh. That's a little flaccid. Hold on, maybe I can bring it a little closer, so that's not so bad. Oh, yeah, the wire could be a little bit stronger. Oh, so yeah, you can manage to get a bit of a pose out of it, but this is one weak wire. Would have been nice to see one a little bit stronger. I'm sure you could cut it a little shorter, so the law of the lever isn't so savage on it, but uh, but as it stands, it's a little bit floppy. And just for fun, there's the shield doing everything at once. Beam boomerang saber a bit. Floppy little clipper down here, and the shield round here. So it can do quite a bit. Both of these are awesome. This one could be a little bit better, but if you BYO wire, then it can be fine. Next up in here, then, we've got a pair of these beam effects. We saw these a little bit earlier on when I tried them with the shins of the Justice Knight. So these just attach into the feet like so. We've got this little bit down here, this other bit up here. So they attach in there as a kind of... Shin Beam. Now that is pretty cool. Shin Beam for a uh, wrecking Shin Asuka. <laughs> but um, dum. Pop them both down like that for some wicked blender kicks. So up next in here, we've got the Fatum 2 backpack. And by no means, this is a small accessory because there is a whole lot going on here. This does knob up a little bit more during cutting out than the mobile suit itself, but from what I'm looking at right now, it's not as bad as I remember. There are some parts like here which are quite obvious, so you might want to take some care when building this thing right here. But this is some great articulation. So the wings can move forward and back like this. There is the up and down motion. The cannons up here can flip back like this. There is in and out like so, not a lot, but it is there. This section here can flip up and forward, but because of its design, this segment right here is quite prone to straining. As you can see, mine is strained here from just some minimal posing, 
And it's because you have to flip this section up first and then back like this or maybe vice versa. But if you do it the wrong way, it catches and you may strain it very easily. So be careful with that particular joint. But that right there is what it looks like once it's all the way up. The attachment points for the backpack are here. They can flip up like so. We've got some handles here. They pop out just like that. And we've got a three millimeter hole for sticking it on an action base. So if this didn't have enough beam effects already, we've got these small two ones here as well. These are for using on the wings. They just pop in there and down here. And that is what it looks like attached. So when this is flipped up, the wings can actually be used as offensive weapons which is pretty damn awesome. So now moving on to the articulation and cause it's pretty much the same as what we saw right here with the Justice Knight, let's speed through it pretty quickly. So first up, as for the neck, we've got that standard giggity 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 goo. So that's pretty good. There he is looking all the way up, a little bit blocked by that neck flap. There he is looking all the way down. Not the greatest really. Side to side pivot and there's that spin all the way around. So I'm going to pop off the arm here because this is a unique shoulder joint. So usually the ball, when it comes to high grade Gundams, is in the shoulder itself. And I'll just whip out the Al Windham here so you can check out what he's got because he's got the standard shoulder. So it's usually a cup in the shoulder like that, a polycap cup, and the ball just pops in like so. So the Infinite Justice here, as well as not featuring any polycaps at all, which is a great thing, has a very nice shoulder joint. So this section can move out like that, somewhat like what you would see with a Master Grade. This can move down and up from there. And then inside the shoulder, you've got all of what a ball joint can do. On top of that, this section here is separate from the arm, which is separate from the actual shoulder armor. So there is a lot going on here. It's very simple, but at the same time, a very refined design. But as for what we actually get from that, there it is all the way to the front. Can he? Can he? Can he? He can almost fold his arms. I feel like I've done this before. But that little Sea Destiny style cockpit top there gets in the way. So as for the arm all the way up there. Hold on, hold on. There we go. So that's pretty good. Just beyond parallel to the ground. The shoulder armor here can move independently to the arm, which is quite unusual for a high grade. This then can spin all the way around like so. We've got ball joint motion here, which means it can flare the shoulders back in a very dynamic, nice way, or flail them forward in this not so dynamic, nice way. Full spin at the upper arm as we normally would. Double jointed bend at the elbow, absolute perfection right there. Standard ball and socket right here for the wrist, so exactly what you'd expect. As for the ab crunch, there isn't really anything to the front. There it is to the back, so it isn't a patch on the Destiny. There is this side. Woo! To side. That is nice. Ooh, there's extra down in the hips. Man, it hasn't even been long since this review, but I've forgotten a lot of the aspects about what makes this and this a very impressive build. Next up then, we've got the full rotation at the waist right there. Down to the skirting armor, and it can flip up like so, so your standard ball joint goings on right here. This side skirting is anything but standard. It can move up and down like this. And inside the waist can flip back and forward like that. This is some very not high grade stuff right here. This is impressive. Look at that. Look at the way the side skirtings can raise and move around and cross each other around in the back. That's cool. This kit has a very misleading butt flap because at first it seems like it's just bolted on there, but it's actually a very premium butt flap. So it can move up and down, but this is not part of its motion. This is the very unique locking hip joint that we also saw in the Justice Knight. So I'll lock that back into position and this is what we've got from the hips. So I'll go through the standard kick so you can see. There's the kick up to the front. Very, very nice. Flip these guys back. There is the legs all the way out, so this thing absolutely destroys the splits. It doesn't need to be able to do that, but it can do that. And because the butt flap, these can't move back. But of course, you can pop that off and get more out of it if you do want. But what that does is unlock this joint in here. So we do have a joint which kicks the legs out further. Also, you'll notice under here, we've got two sets of holes. So that's to lock it in here and one to lock it out there. So let's lock it at the outer position. That does mean the standard standing pose, it looks a little ridiculous because the legs look really short and they can't push in any more than that. But that does unlock a new world of different potential aerial poses. So that is quite cool and looks dynamic in the sky. 
But yeah, in general, it will just nerf a lot of the movements. Like, that's the kick up to the front now. That is the movement out to the back. And the movement out to the side is just a little bit more ridiculous. But that is definitely a cool, optional joint there. So the Infinite Justice does not have the full spin at the upper leg, sadly. This is something I don't particularly like. I would like a little more out of that, but again, that would be all you'd want for general natural poses. This right there is the bend at the knee, so it is a double jointed bend. Very nice one at that. This little thruster in the back of the leg can move and tilt up and down just like so. And this guy here has a whopping three joints in its ankle. So this one which raises the foot up and back like this. We've got the ball joint in there that does what a ball joint does. And then we have a poly cap that allows it to tilt side to side like this. Also, we've got down at the toes, no up, just down. And it's about time we popped off that leg to check out that functional movement on the ground. And just in case you don't know what I mean by that, it's the poses we can get without the foot leaving the ground. So there it is all the way to the front. So it's good, not mind blowing, but it is very good. Out to the back, there we go, that is quite good. Of course the toe can bend like this, but I don't count that as standing on the ground anymore. And as for the side, wow, to side pivot, that is awesome. So yeah, the high grade Infinite Justice may not be outposing the high grade Destiny, which is one of the best posable high grades out there, but you'll still get all of your crazy Gundam Seed Destiny poses without any effort whatsoever. Basically, it's quite impressive. So that right there is it for the review, and all I can say is this is one mind-blowing kit right here. So I was on the edge of either giving this right here gold tier or platinum tier, and the way I looked at it is the Justice Knight Gundam got gold tier. The High Grade Destiny Gundam, that got gold tier. So is this the same or better than those kits? Well, compared to the Justice Knight, it's better. The backpack is nicer, a lot of the new standard Infinite Justice parts are nicer than the gaudy gold and whatnot we would have seen on the awesome, yet somewhat garish Justice Knight. As for it compared to Destiny, it's a little bit of a toss-up. When it comes to articulation, the Destiny wins hands down. Palma Fiocina's down, more like. But when it comes to the overall build, the backpack, the general kit, the plastic, the color, the sparkles in the plastic, this kit does win out, so I am going to give the High Grade Infinite Justice the first ever Platinum Tier Award for a High Grade. Sure, this kit isn't without its flaws, and I'll mention them right off the bat. I would like to see a little bit more articulation in the torso and a little bit more in the waist. The waist might sound a little bit odd because it does have that cool joint, but I would have liked to have seen the full rotation at the upper legs. But besides that, the articulation is pretty damn awesome. The other aspect would be that pink part that is missing from the rifle. Once again, the rifle isn't necessarily the kit itself, it isn't necessarily anything main on the mobile suit, it is just an accessory, but it would have been nice to see that fully color accurate, especially in a fairly expensive high grade. But besides that, this thing blows my mind apart. It's solid, it's awesome, has a ridiculous amount of accessories, and it looks so damn good. This is one kit that will not go unnoticed in your collection. And if you do want one of your own, there is a link down there in the description. You can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. Once again, all my unending thanks to each and every one of you guys. Whether you just watch the videos, like the videos, share them, or support me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon like Craig Jerry, Kaiser721, Bolwig, Tyler Sanders, Caleb Engelhart, Hank Handsome, and Sean T.